Hi, this is Brent McKim, president of JCTA, and I want to talk to you a little bit about our salary schedule and the things that affect it. Uh, it can be kind of complicated, so being a teacher, I've created a visual aid that I hope will help us uh, understand what's going on. What I have here is I have a graphical representation of our salary schedule uh, using a cylinder with a very thick green liquid in it to represent the salary schedule. And down here at the bottom, as you can see, we have a little eyedropper that's full of air. So if we squeeze the eyedropper full of air, we can create a bubble that comes in like a new hire on step zero of the salary schedule. And each year that goes by, the little bubble will go up one step per year through this very thick liquid, making its way up to the top, which is step 25 up here 25 years later. Uh, you can see there's a little white dot that's already up there, uh, a little white bubble that's made it up there. Uh, here's a little gray bubble that when we, let's take this as a new hire and let's, for the sake of this discussion, let's look at a teacher that's hired with a master's degree that's called a rank two teacher. So we're going to use numbers for a rank two teacher. When this rank two teacher is hired, the little bubble comes out and comes in to our example on step zero and starts to move up through the steps. What does that look like? Well, to begin with, in 2011, this step zero was at about $45,000. I've rounded to the nearest $500. And some steps are bigger and some are smaller, so I've averaged out, and each line on here represents $1,500, so we have nice, even steps. Um, some are a little more, some are a little less, but on the average, this is what they work out to. When this new hire is uh, hired <clears throat> at $45,000 a year, he or she may aspire to be like the teacher next door, who is up here at step number four, making $51,000 a year. And so I'm gonna make a little mark here to show us that that's maybe a big deal because the $45,000 teacher is looking to, to the day when they're going to be able to buy $51,000 worth of goods and services and break, it, break through the $50,000 mark. When this teacher was hired, the average salary was up here around $60,000. The top salary was up here around $73,000. And there are probably uh, plenty of bubbles all through here, but we're just going to have the new hire the teacher next door that's here at step four that the new hire is looking toward reaching that point. And here's a white bubble to represent a teacher that's at the top of the salary schedule. Well, if there, was, if there were never any raises and never any inflation, this would all be very simple and the teacher would just bubble up through here, watching his or her buying power increase each year. And uh, the salary schedule probably wouldn't need to change. Uh, because there'd be no inflation and everything would be very simple. However, there are a couple of factors that are uh, complicating the situation. Namely, we have inflation, which reduces the buying power of salaries. And then we have raises, which uh, provide larger salaries to make up for that. So let's suppose we go back to the year 2011. If we go to the Bureau of Labor Statistics in Washington, D.C., we can see that the inflation rate uh, in the year 2011 was about 3%, which means that $45,000 one year later would no longer buy $45,000 worth of goods and services. So we're going to look at this as inflation adjusted dollars so that we can keep using 2011 uh, figures, which means one year later, $45,000 would buy 3% less than it would uh, the year that this new hire was hired. So all things being equal, this entire salary schedule would have to move down some because the buying power of 45,000 would be 3% less. However, uh, if we receive a pay raise, the pay raise provides more funding and moves this back up again. So if there was a 3% um, uh, loss due to inflation, but we received a 3% pay, pay raise, then uh, this step zero would be right back to the same buying power as it was the year before. 
So some years pay raises can be greater than inflation and the entire thing moves up. Some years pay raises can be less than inflation and the whole thing moves down. Or if the pay raise is exactly equal to inflation, we would call that a cost of living adjustment and uh, the, the uh, cylinder would stay at exactly the same level. So let's look at what actually happened in 2011. As I said, in 2011, the inflation rate was 3%. Uh, we received a 2.5% pay raise that year. So the average teacher uh, saw the, their pay raise uh, uh, fall 5% behind inflation. In other words, inflation was 3%, they earned 2.5%. So the, uh, the entire salary schedule lost about half a percent to inflation. If we use the average salary of 6,000, one half a percent of that would be $300. So one year later, we would move this down a little bit uh, because it'd be $300 uh, lower. But one year later, even though the whole thing sank, the teacher moves up to step one now. So, you can see they're still better off than they were the year before. Let's look at what happened the next year. In 2012-13, the inflation rate was 1.7% and we received a 1% rate. So we were 7 tenths of a percent behind inflation, which means we lost about, on average, $420 more. So we've got to move this down another $420. And we move the bubble up one more step because a year's gone by and this new hire has moved up. Of course, this uh, individual would have moved up uh, a couple of steps too. And this individual up here is at the top and there are no more steps. So that individual has just lost buying power and there are no steps to make up for it. Uh, let's look at what happened in 13-14. In 13-14, the inflation rate was 1.6%. Uh, we got a 0% pay raise, which means we lost another one, the entire cylinder, the entire pay scale lost another 1.6% or about $960 to inflation. So we move it down again. Okay. So, uh, but again, the teacher takes a step up because uh, they have another year of service and now they are at step three. This teacher would go up another step as well. And then uh, in 2014-15, the last year for which we have inflation information, uh, the inflation rate was uh, seven tenths of a percent. The inflation dropped to a quite low rate. Our pay raise uh, was uh, about 1.4%. So we actually uh, picked up about seven tenths of a percent uh, compared to inflation that year. So we can actually move the column back up a little bit and this new hire uh, comes up to here. So uh, over that time period from 2011 to 2015, what's the total cumulative effect of this? The total cumulative effect of inflation is uh, we lost 300 the first year uh, to inflation. We lost the whole salary schedule lost 420 the next year, lost 960 to inflation the next year in buying power, but regained about 420, which means overall, uh, due to inflation, it had lost about $1,260. So just to adjust this to where it's fairly accurate, if this is $1,500 per inch, it's about minus 1,200, it puts it about here. But there was a second thing that happened during this four year period of time. During this four year period of time, uh, the deduction from teachers' paychecks for their uh, pension, for their Kentucky Teacher Retirement System pension, increased by 2%. In other words, an additional 2% was taken out for uh, re retirement payments, which means uh, another $1,200 was lost during this, 400, uh, sorry, during this four year period of time. So we need to move this down altogether uh, 1,260 due to inflationary losses and another $1,200 due to uh, increased deductions for retirement, which is a total of $2,460. So over the four year period of time since Dr. Hargins has been in JCPS, 
uh, the entire salary schedule on average is about uh, almost $2,500 below where it was when she came here. So we'll move it down to here. Probably right about there on, on this scale. So you can see that this new hired teacher uh, compared to where they were hired when they came in with $45,000 worth of buying power is above the buying power when they were hired, but the entire pay scale has sunk by about almost $2,500 for every step on it. Uh, the, fortunately, the bubble is moving up somewhat faster than the entire cylinder is sinking uh, because it, the raises are not keeping up with inflation but the bubble is keeping ahead of the sinking a little bit. So, however though, remember when the new hire was first hired, they were looking forward to reaching step four when they would have $51,000 worth of buying power uh, in 2011 dollars. Well, by the end of 2015, uh, the new hire has reached step four, but when he or she got to step four, you can see step four has sunk to where it's probably about $48,500 worth of buying power, something like that, not $51,000 worth. So when they got there, the real buying power of it still isn't the $51,000. They haven't broken through the $50,000 mark in terms of uh, uh, inflation adjusted buying power. And so, uh, in a sense, it's worse for the uh, employee up here at step 25 because at step 25, they don't have any more steps to uh, compensate for the sinking that's been occurring in the whole cylinder since Dr. Hargan's arrived. And so their buying power has simply declined by a total of uh, 4.1%. 4 now, there are some who will say uh, that, well, er, people are all right because people are moving up faster than the whole thing sinks. But as the representative of the professional educators in the district, our concern is with maintaining a high standard for the profession so that when a new hire is hired, they are able to enter into a professional career with a professional compensation. As you can see, the new hires now, when they were coming in with $45,000 of buying power, they're now down uh, at probably about $41,500 or something in, in that range on the average. So they've lost uh, a significant ground to inflation. And step one is lower than step one was when, when, uh, when the new hire was hired and step two and so forth. So, the point of all of this is to say uh, we can't just look at the bubbles that are rising up as the entire salary schedule sinks. We have to recognize that we, uh, we have a professional compensation system for professional educators and we have to concern ourselves with the entire cylinder and we have to be mindful that we are providing pay raises that are comparable to inflation and other factors like KTRS or the real buying power of everyone on the salary schedule uh, suffers in the process and eventually you reach the point where you no longer have a professional salary schedule at all that recognizes the professionalism and attracts and keeps quality teachers. So I hope that this helps uh, explain the uh, factors that are involved and I hope that it helps you understand why it's really important to have raises that balance inflation because even though the little bubble is rising through something that's sinking fast enough to stay above water, uh, we have a, an obligation, I think, and a responsibility to the profession to maintain a professional salary schedule. And quite honestly, when the new hire was hired and was looking forward to reaching the, a real purchasing power of $50,000 so they maybe could buy their first house or car, uh, it's important to them to be able to plan their life and family and have some expectation that the, the steps that they see ahead of them will have some similar value and meaning when they get there. So uh, that's my explanation. I hope it's helpful. If you have any questions, you can email me at brent.mckim at jcta.org or give me a call at jcta 454-3400. 
I hope this is helpful. Thank you.